In this video, we're going to talk about predicting the product of a chemical reaction, and we're going to specifically look at single displacement reactions. These are also known as single replacement reactions. And then this is the general form that this type of reaction takes on. We have an element that's all by itself, and so A is just representing any sort of element. It's going to react with a compound. This is what this part's representing. It's two elements combined, or a multitude of elements combined with each other. And we're going to see that the element all alone is going to bump out one of the elements here of this compound. And that's what we see now. The B is all by itself and the A is joined up with this compound over here. Usually what's going to happen is we're going to have a metal represented here by A that's going to swap places with another metal that's already in a compound. So let's look at a couple of examples and see how can we predict what the products are going to look like. So here's the two that we're going to look at. The first one here has magnesium, that's all by itself here, and it's going to react with aluminum chloride, which is represented right here. Now these little symbols, these letters, represent the state. And so the S here means solid, and then the AQ means that it's dissolved in water. And so this stuff here would be actually dissolved in water, kind of like when you put salt, table salt, into water and dissolve it. Now, not every single displacement reaction is going to occur, so magnesium may not be able to switch places with aluminum. It may not be reactive enough. So when we think of aluminum is already reacted with chloride, magnesium needs to be more reactive than aluminum in order to bump aluminum out of that compound. So we use something called an activity series of metals. So this is called the activity series. And this shows uh, in order here from the bottom, things that are unreactive moving up to very reactive metals. So all we have to do is look for where's magnesium. Here it is on this list. And then look for aluminum. We can see it's right below it. And so magnesium is just slightly more reactive than aluminum. And so that means that this top reaction here, it is going to take place. So the magnesium is going to be able to bump out that aluminum. I'm going to swap places with each other. And so I'm going to have the easy part here is just writing aluminum now all by itself. I'm going to put a little S to show it's solid. The tougher part here is I have to look at how is magnesium going to combine with the chloride. It's the Cl right here. And I have to look at the charges of these two elements because it's going to form an ionic compound. So magnesium is a metal, chlorine is a nonmetal. And so when they combine together, they're going to form ions. Magnesium has a 2 plus charge. Chlorine has a minus 1 charge. And I know that because of their locations on the periodic table. So I can see here's magnesium. It's in group 2. So here's group 1, here's group 2. Everything here has a 2 plus charge. And then chlorine is over here in group 7. Everything here in group 7 has a minus 1 charge. And so I need to get those charges to balance each other. So I'll need two chlorines. And this will be dissolved in water. And so I'll just put a little AQ there to signify that. So the top one involved two metals switching places with each other. And then we had the non-metal of chlorine just going with the magnesium. Down here at the next one, I have bromine, which is a non-metal. It's going to react with potassium iodide. This is an ionic compound, so we have potassium as a metal, and iodine is a nonmetal. So there's not two, metal, uh, just two metals to switch place here. In this case, we're going to have the two nonmetals switching places with each other. So we can either have two metals switching places or two nonmetals switching places. So in this case, iodine is going to be all on its own. And the one thing we need to keep track of here is what do elements look like when they're by themselves? Now, magnesium and pretty well all metals are just going to be the symbol and then a little S to show it's solid. Iodine right here is a diatomic element. That means when it's found by itself in nature, it exists as two atoms bonded together. That means diatomic. And there are seven diatomic elements, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So these six right here in this L shape, and then hydrogen over here, when they're found on their own in nature, they're found as diatomic elements, so two of them combine just like this. You just kind of have to remember that. And so I'm going to put a two when I write this symbol, and iodine is usually solid at room temperature. 
And I'm going to end up with the bromine now combining with the potassium. Once again, it's an ionic compound, so I have to look at those charges. I'm going to have potassium. And then bromine combining together. And I can take a look again at the periodic table here to see what their charges are going to be. So potassium is here in group 1. It's going to have a plus 1 charge. Bromine is over here in group 7. Everything here has a minus 1 charge. Those charges have to balance. And so since they're the same plus 1, minus 1, I only need one of each. And then I could just indicate that this is going to be aqueous. Now the last thing I need to do, I have both of my chemical reactions here completed. I know the products. I ha the last thing I have to do is make sure that they're balanced. And so I'm going to go ahead and balance these. I'll start with the one on the bottom because that's kind of the easy one to do. I'm just going to need to put a two right there and a two right there so everything is balanced. And then the top one, I'm going to need to put a three right here and then I'll need a two there, a two there, and a three there. If you want to review the video on balancing chemical equations so you can see how I did that, uh, you can click on the link to do that. And that is predicting the products of chemical reactions involving single displacement reactions.